you, you could easily say Leeds were terrible, Leeds were awful, mm. but I think Castleford's attack was so good. Not not many of those tries in the first half that came from the wingers were through bad defending. Yeah. Like you could argue maybe on one of one or two of Minikins that he could have been stopped somehow, but he's just proving to be so elusive. He's not just done that to to Leeds this week. He's he's stepping and shifting and getting through people all over the show. A lot of people talk about the try from Gale's kick, but to be honest, I see tries like that off kicks every week at, at my place mm. with George Williams. So <laughs> no, I fucking don't man. <laughs> And I'll tell you now, I'll just warn you now. Oh, the magic, if I the hear magic the fucking edge is gone. Golden Edge. They're all, they're all injured, aren't they? Yeah. But anyway, um, I, the try that impressed me the most yeah. was Zach Hardacre's try, because that try is so hard to defend, and for him to, to pop up how it is, the, just defenders can't read that sort of setup play very easily, especially yeah. after you've already been torn apart out wide. Mm. And so I, I just, yeah. Amazed by it, I don't think. I don't think that the Leeds defence made it easy for Cass. I think Cass just made it impossible for the Leeds defence. Yeah. What did help Cass is that Leeds were absolutely diabolical the other way, offered no threat, no creativity, no no dramas for the Cass defence to have to think about. Yeah. So all those skillful flair Cass players had to think about was how to attack because every time they picked the ball up in a situation, they managed to turn it into attack. Almost straight away, mm-hmm. and that was through them being able to just be thinking about getting on the front foot because Leeds leads off. I mean, what Leeds one Almond Royd with a one two off the post that yeah. was purely luck, and it's just like whereas Cass was scoring glorious try after glorious, glorious try, passing yeah. moves, people in motion, even Mike McMeekin popping up on in the centers with the last pass on one of the, the tries, and everything was coming off because yeah. the. The, the, and and Luke Gale, in all seriousness, has laid down a marker for the other England halfbacks. Mm-hmm. And well, we're going to talk about it later. But there's going to be some race on for that spot. Yeah, for those for those shirts in the England team with the way that the season started. Yeah, no, definitely. And like, I can only reiterate what you say. It was a resounding, a resounding cast of a victory. Just just the, the the manner in which they blew them away in kind of. Such, but I was trying to think back to like when can I recall a team being this dominant for you know this length of time and coming up with this result against you know a team that they should be competitive with the way. The only thing I can think of, and it's probably because I go back to this a lot when I think of blowouts, was Bulls in 2005 when we played Hull in the playoffs. I don't know if you recall, we yeah, I do remember, yeah, blew off the park in the first half. It, it was up there with that level of just thing you lose to Wakefield next week. The water, no, we went on to win the grand final that year, Mark. All oh, right, there was one year you played. Hull and then you got beat by Wakefield. We get beat by a lot of teams these days, but that particular year we went on to win the grand final. It was quite a while ago, though. But no, Castleford looked looked tremendous, and it was great to see them. And they didn't miss a beat um, without Rangi Chase. And you know, look as much as you want to. See, you know, we've not talked about Rangi Chase much, and there's not a great deal to say. Well, as much as you want the guy to be okay, it's I don't know the details of what's stupid people on. having fights in Castleford Town Centre being dicks, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it looks like there's been a, a confrontation, isn't there? Now, the other thing I've heard is that he's back in training and he'll be he, he'll, he he is. in contention to yeah. play. So I hope it's just a blip and it could have happened to anybody in some respects. Um, but they didn't miss a beat without him. No. Nope. And I wonder how much they're spending on him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It could be... Uh, it could be um, Paul McShane is a, just, he's a great player to have around his squad. The enthusiasm and the utility that that boy offers... Was a was a real boon for Cass in a week where they were playing exceptionally well and a lot of people have been getting credit. Paul McShane's a player I really rate, really rate for them, and I bet he's one of the guys around the dressing room that the rest of the players like having in the squad as well. I think he's a cracking cracking player, and he offered a lot for them. Tell us about the stats, Mark. Uh, yeah, this game had the most tries, the most breaks, the most tackles, and the most successful offloads of any game yet this year, and that was all down to Castleford. They had 1.3 metres per carry more, over 600 metres more, nearly 5% better ta- team tackle success. Their 18 breaks in this game is the second highest single game total a team has had since SLP began. Wow. What was the most, Tom? They had 54 more positive plays than negative plays, with a plus 92 differential over their opponents. Are you so- seriously asking me which of the most was? Was it last week? No, no. Was it you lot? It was against you. Was it against us? It was you on the... On the on oh, I forgot. Look, look Bob, Bob Phillips got in touch about 
how he used to feel listening to me having to talk about rugby league every week, and I think he can sympathise a bit more. Yeah. But now I just blocked it all out. It's all gone. It's just there's been too much trauma to worry about one stat in particular. Lee's numbers were poor, but the story of this is how many positive impact plays cats produce really. And one other line is it's Leeds worst defeat since 1996. There you go. And I'm presuming it was in the game that you mullered us in, was it? That these breaks came. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Individually. Well, Greg Eden, three tries, one try assist, 140 metres, five clean breaks. Zach Hardacre with one try, two try assists, 11 tackle balls, 180 metres, two clean breaks. Junior Moores with a try assist, five tackle balls, 123 metres, two clean breaks, and three successful offloads. Um, it's quite an impact off the bench he's, he's still able to make. Andy Lynch, 142 metres, and Luke Gale, one try, three try assists, six tackle busts. There were some people who put in noteworthy efforts for Leeds. Adam Cuthbertson, 140 metres, three successful offloads. He's He can't do it on his own, but he's trying, I think, mm. uh, to, to do that. Ash Hanley with 101 metres, two clean breaks for him. Jimmy the Kind Horse, 41 tackles. Brad Singleton, 47. And Matt Parcell, 48 tackles. So some, some lads in that pack working hard, but not quite um, mm. good enough. There you go. Do you remember on last week's Super League pod when you and I talked ourselves out of tipping Hull FC to beat Huddersfield narrowly and convinced ourselves that Huddersfield might put up a valiant effort and come away with a one point win? Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware. Yeah, yeah, well, it was 48 points to 8 in favour of Hull FC this weekend, Mark, down at the John Smiths. Mark in Snape. Front of. In front of. I was going to get to that later on. I'm, going, I'm on about four different bits of paper, but if you must know, immediately it was in front of 5,176 people. It was refereed by Phil Bentham, interestingly enough. Uh, Mark Snape has got a hat trick and kicked eight goals for Hull FC as they comfortably beat the Huddersfield Giants. The visitors had led 24 0 at half time thanks to a brace from Snade and tries from, from, from Fatuli Talano and Albert Kelly. Kelly had bagged his second after the restart and Josh Griffin, accompanied by Carlos Tumavavi, both scored before Snead crossed for his third of the evening. Sam Wood and Oliver Roberts got consolation tries for the Giants in the second half. Huddersfield standoff Danny Bruff, who now only needs six points to move up to ninth on the all time domestic point scorers list missed both his attempts at gold mark so he went off half cocked it was a dominant victory which moves the black and whites up into second in the Super League table ahead, or move them up ahead of the rest of the weekend's fixtures um, from the fans the knitting and crocheting guild of Huddersfield got in touch this it's week always a pleasure to hear from them. I wish we could hear from other knitting and crocheting guilds to be honest I feel like they must be around well why are we not so appealing to them outside if you've of seen the uh, if you've seen the, the Giants knitwear that's been put together I it's think they fabulous. could do a roaring trade if they took that up to the John Smiths absolutely of a, of a Thursday or a Friday or a Sunday or whenever they might play anyway for clarity's sake this is Marie Wright forgetting to switch Twitter accounts isn't it so this is <laughs> Nominally from the Witchwood Lady. She says, Giants missed key players with much goal line attack but little glory. Nice to see Roberts and Woods score again, otherwise pants. There you go. Uh, Mark Wilson got in touch. He said, I have never been this calm after such a big loss. Um, poor performance, of course, but it was to be expected with eight of our starting 13 outs and all five backs out of position. Could have been a lot worse and I'm not worried yet. Scoots28 Max said, much better than the last two matches, promising signs for the rest of the season. Carlos must have heard my Gary Schofield analysis of him in the close season, as he's a different player. Seeker very good again. Half-backs fairly average, winky face. It was the perfect response to the uh, to the spray that, uh, that Scoey had given him, wasn't it, from Mark Snead, really, to come out with a performance like this. I think perhaps a fairly unjust going over that he got at the hands of, uh, of of Gary Schofield. Well, you'll never win a trophy with a player who was pretty decent in your trophy winning match last year. Was part of his uh, his round. Yeah, it felt like it was a bit personal. I don't know why. Maybe mm. because Mark Snade's not maybe quite as gifted as Gary Schofield was, but has a more complete trophy cabinet as it stands. So. Um, <laughs> I, d- I don't know. Let me join in. I like Gary Schofield bashing. Go on. <laughs> no, but to, to be fair, you know, he's lit a fire under some of the whole players with it and they've reacted and responded mm. as is. And whilst Mark Snead's very much, I'd say, on the out, on the periphery of, of England's squad places given the performances of some of the others and the favour towards Kevin Brown that, you know, he managed to play his one good game in the game against Wayne Bennett and then the other three players mm. um, that are in contention for those spots ahead of Mark Snead. But... Um, 
he certainly did himself a favour. I mean, not missing a goal as well, yeah. so it was a complete performance from from Snade. And let's not forget, Snade did start life off as a fullback come half. Mm. So there is a running game in him. It's it's just he doesn't use it. And there's a passing. I think his passing game is developing. It's just mm. he's not really been. I think the leadership from Hull uh, over the last year and a half has come through the whole pack. Yeah. Now the whole pack that's led them wasn't really there for this game. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's Mark Sneed and Albert Kelly stepping up and showing they can run run the ship too. But let's uh, let's not let's not mess around too much. This Huddersfield team was an absolute sh- they, they had a, shambles. They had a player playing who I'd not heard of. And I put together all the squad lists for the start of the season. Yeah, they are and, decimated. And, and his right. name, and, and his name, which we'll get to actually, because he makes the stats roundup, didn't didn't jump off the page as someone I recognised no. at all when I was looking at this game. Um, I'm not even sure how they started, how they lined up in the backs, given that Lee Gaskell was a relatively late pull out from the squad. Yeah. Um, and you know, their best defender in Michael Lawrence is looks set to be out for couple of months maybe mm. um, unfortunately which is a, which is a big shame one of the early season the first couple of games Dale Ferguson played really well so another yeah. player missing out then you've got your two best players arguably in Kudjo and McGilvery certainly the yeah. most potent win combination potent right wing combination Super League seen over the last two years mm-hmm. not playing Aaron Murphy not playing yeah Jake Maymo's out you've not even seen Jake Maymo yet in exactly. the Jets shirt it was all over the show. God help, God help me if they have trouble at Hooker because Adam O'Brien picked up an injury for playing Friday Fax this weekend. Well, no, he picked it up in training and didn't even play. Is it a training? Oh, right, yeah, so yeah. There you go. I just did his injury at Fax. They uh, are safe. So, trouble at Mill. I'm, I'm with Mark in that he'd, I wouldn't necessarily be hitting the panic button yet. No, but if, if, if I'm a Huddersfield, us- if I'm a Huddersfield fan, because. Mm. Some of these players will be coming back over the next few weeks, and uh... but if there's something wrong in training that's meaning that they're not being recovered properly or they're being not cared for properly off the field, as quickly as these players might come back, they're going to be joined in the physio room by other people. So hopefully, it's not something that's organisationally wrong at Huddersfield. Well, they'll have a Cooper tie back this. next week because he was a, he was a suspension mm. miss, wasn't he? And, yeah. and him and Ike Hifo have been mm-hmm. a big part of what's been going on too. So there's yeah. There's play and and could Joe? They're not sure if he's going to be back or not. There's, there's players who can come back into this side yeah. in the next few weeks and make them more competitive. This was not a competitive side on paper, and no. it's no surprise that they were turned over even by mm. a slightly depleted Hull side because Hull's backline was there to be on fire. Yeah. What do the stats tell us, though? Does this back up your assertions, Mark? Well, like Cass, Hull stats were dominant, and like Leeds, Hull does feel we're below 1,000 metres, always a recipe for defeat. A huge 1.8 metres per carry better average gain and 1.5% better team tackle success underpin an overall winning stat line for FC. Mm -hmm. And individually, then, who stood out for us? Mark Snade with three tries, a try assist, eight from eight kicking goals. Carlos Tumavavu with a try and 150 metres. Mahe Fenua outside him at 137 metres. Danny Yeme, tackle 52, Houghton, had a try assist, 50 tackles, 10 of which were marker tackles, so a bit of defence thrown in there too for the man who goes both ways. And Albert Kelly with um, two tries, one try assist, two clean breaks. So right. Starting to impose himself. Absolutely. Who stood out for Huddersfield, if anyone? Well, young outside back Darnell McIntosh grabbed 144 running metres for himself. I'm not sure if he played on the wing or full back because... It'll probably not a shift in... Because he was shifted about a bit, wasn't he? Because he was lined up originally on the wing. I'm not. I, I'm guessing Briley went to full back when mm. he switched, but I haven't seen any of the highlights to know. Um, Gene Ormsby, 114 metres. Ryan Hinchcliffe, 103 metres. Okay, there you go. So uh, to Friday night then, and down. Oh, I don't want to say the totally wicked. Stadium yeah, where Wakefield Trinity earned their first win in 12 games as a late disputed penalty gave them victory over St Helens in dismal, dismal conditions. Saints had led 12-10 when the video referee, a judge Jacob Miller, was held back in tracking a Sam Williams kick, awarding a try that Williams then went on to convert. Trin had led uh, 10 points to 4 at half time through Mason Caton Brown's spectacular finish and three Williams goals. Mark Percival scored twice to add to Ryan Morgan's first half score. However, Chris Chester's side showed their metal and composure to fight back and end a nine-game losing run against Saints, which goes back as far as 2012. 
Yeah, and they won the first game since the middle of last season. Yes. Um, Wakefield. It might even be like the first win that Fafita's played in since. 